Greetings, Mr. Crossy here from Tech3D. I still do exist, yes. The channel's a bit a bit dormant at the moment, as I'm focusing on things that actually get me paid <laughs> for the time being. Anyway, uh, coming out of semi-retirement to talk about something that I've talked about a lot in the past. I've done lots of videos on this in the past, but I'm not narcissistic enough to think that just because I've done that, everyone should know it and should see the videos by now. And that's not how life works. Uh, but it's gaming laptops versus professional laptops or desktops could be anything um so this is going to be a talky head video right me me waffling away unapologetically long i i'm not going to edit it and i've got absolutely zero intention of pandering to the get to the point just get on with it audience because i ain't got the patience for that anymore i cannot be asked frankly if uh, if you don't want to listen to experience and information in detail then off your trot bucko and go somewhere else uh, it, it is what it is I don't, have the, I don't have the time to, to chop it up and to uh, make it as concise as possible. But anyway, now that that passive aggressiveness is, <laughs> is out of the way, hey, let's talk about this. Right, one of the clients that I'm working with at the moment is throwing a question at me. And if my own clients are asking me this, then th this is obviously still a thing. They're going through their, their three or maybe five yearly, I think it's a three yearly workstation refresh. Every m Most companies go through this. They refresh their, their systems every three years. And they've asked me, look, we've got a choice of two. We hear you, Neil. We should be buying the Dell. It's five grand. It's the same, not the same spec, but it's the equivalent spec as the ones that they're replacing. Uh, i9, uh, mid-tier GPU, 32 to 64 gigs of RAM. And it's five grand. Uh, and we need to buy a lot of them, like possibly up to 50. Or, hear me out, Neil, hear me out. We found this great gigabyte gaming laptop, uh, which... Is this, it's the same specs though. It's like i9 13th gen. It's a GeForce 4070, which on paper, according to these you know, dark sites in them with ads all over the place, and uh, it, it's roughly the same as the professional one in terms of performance. So and it's two grand. So um, should we? Should we? Should we? Should we? I mean, how faster is the Dell? Uh, and I'm like, okay. All right, let's let's do, let's do this dance again. So you've you've got your you've got your professional Dells. This this one here is around. It's about eleven to twelve grand for this specific one here. Uh, I nine top of the range. It's the A fifty five hundred, which is the flagship professional GPU. Sixty four gigs of RAM, a few terabytes worth of SSDs, four K screen, the lot. Right, about eleven grand. And then you've got. The equivalent gaming laptop, and when I say equivalent, I really mean equivalent because it's the same parts, but in a gaming chassis. Same i9, exactly the same one, Core HX i9, 12900, this one was it's from the 12th gen era. 3080 Ti, which was the flagship gaming uh, GPU, exactly the same chip as what's in here, and uh, same RAM, same storage. This one was about five grand. Five grand versus 11 grand. So the question from a lot of people is, well, how much faster is the Dell to justify being double the price? Answer, it ain't. It actually is slower, which that's why that's why it needs conversation, which, uh, like I say, I've done before, but I'm doing it again. So, um, all right, there's, it's a new, there's, there's lots of nuance to this. It depends who you are, where you are, what you're buying, who you're buying for, what your expectations are and what you care about. It's, it's a huge conversation, and I, like I say, I've got no intention of... Uh, condensing this and making it concise. It is what it is. So you've got a couple of a couple of sides to this. The first one is this is actually a really awkward comparison because this particular generation of Dell Precision is very very bad. Uh, they they haven't upgraded their power delivery system to the laptop for about four, maybe ten years, maybe more. And it's still running a two hundred. 40, I think a 240 watt power supply, powering parts that need in excess of 300 watts to, to run. And, and the results were dreadful, like dog shit, before, like really, really bad performance. I'm not sure how this one actually even got to market. And I, I covered that in a previous video called like something like how, how could this be this bad sort of a thing. But even if this Dell did have adequate power delivery, it would still be slower than the gaming laptop. And that's because of uh, multiple things, multiple things. The first one is Dell 
know that these units get used in mission critical, very, very uh, high end business use cases, projects that have deadlines. Uh, they can't fail. They can't be noisy. Whereas the gaming laptops, they get used by some guy with his hands down his pants with a headset on playing World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy, and he doesn't care if it's loud. So MSI can crank up the settings. They can overclock the GPU, the CPU just a tad bit. They can up the, the fan profile so they spin a bit a bit a lot faster than the Dell. So which means that the CPU and the GPU can stretch its legs a lot more, run a lot faster, whilst generating a lot more noise. That kind of noise isn't is not acceptable in a business setting. And when I say a lot more noise, I don't mean, oh, that's a little bit, oh, that's just a tad uncomfortable on my ear holes. Could you please just keep it down just a tad? No, I mean, this. the gaming laptops, they fucking scream. Intolerable levels of noise, upwards of 60 decibels worth of noise. And when that laptop is right next to you, there's no getting away from it. It'll overpower anything else in the room. And it's not just the noise, it's the frequency of the noise. There's, a, there's normally like a little hiss or a, not necessarily a whine, but some kind of high-pitched tone that comes out of the fans as they're spinning that fast. And over a long, sustained period of time, it drives you fucking mental. And that's why I, I used the Titan as my main desktop for everything I did here. Video editing work the lot. Uh, and I, in the end, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't cope with it anymore. I had to swap it out and go back to a desktop. And um, in a in a business setting, that's unacceptable. You can't distribute fifty plus of that to professional engineers as a as the tool to use f- f- in their employment and have to cope with that kind of noise. It's not acceptable. So that's one of the reasons why the Dell runs a bit slower. The fans are. A dial back a bit, therefore the components can't stretch their legs as much as the Canon gaming laptops, and they run a bit slower. Does that justify the price increase, though? Obviously not. So where does that price increase come from? Well, there is an element of Dell, HP, Lenovo tax, brand tax slapped onto it, but the the, th- the three main OEMs that are in the workstation space, your Dell, H- HP, Lenovo, they have multiple years of credentials in the space, R&D, experience, where that experience went, uh, what they did with that to end up with this absolute monstrosity, the 12th gen one. I don't know if the 13th generation one is any better, but uh, what that experience contributed towards this, I will never know. But they do have that experience. And you, you pay for that. You, you read it. You, you, you're paying for their history, their reputation to a certain degree. But also... You've got the professional graphics card now. The professional graphics card versus the gaming graphics card is a lot more expensive. So there's that. You've got better materials. Uh, the, the Titan, whilst it has a metal chassis, for example, and this will be the case with a lot of other, even down to the mid-tier gaming laptops, they may have metal lids, but a lot of the chassis generally is plastic, whereas the likes of your Dells, your HPs, your Lenovo's, the professional workstations, they're all CNC milled for the most part. Uh, metal chassis construction so they're built a lot better they've got better components inside better quality better grade of components the manufacturing process should be better but this bleeds over into the software side of things take these two again as a comparison yes they've got the same parts inside sourced from third parties so Dell can't Dell can't make Intel's i9 run faster than MSI's i9 runs faster other than you're controlling how the fans work and juicing it with some more voltage. It's this. It is literally the same part bought from the same place, just put into two different laptops. Same with the graphics card. Same with the RAM. The RAM is made by Samsung, SK Hynix, or Micron. I think are the, the, the main RAM manufacturers. Dell don't make their own RAM. Neither do MSI. They buy it in. So you're talking about the core components of the laptops being exactly the same. But once they enter into these laptops. The motherboard is proprietary, so you have a better quality motherboard within the Dell laptop as you do with the MSI. The ports, this is where they source the USB ports from, the SD card read, all that kind of stuff, It you'll get a higher grade of, um, of components. The manufacturing process, the way they're actually soldered to the board, that should, in theory, be better on the Dell. So you're paying a bit for that as well. Uh, but in terms, of, in terms of software, so yes, you've got Dell's... <sighs> Dell have a much better ecosystem of software 
to support their systems than the gaming laptops do. Dell, HP, Lenovo, they've got... Um, They've got an ecosystem of update components, which a lot of people call bloatware. And in some cases, they are. But in other cases, they can actually be quite helpful, especially for the updates, which is where a lot of gaming laptops fall short. Updates. Take this MSI Titan, for example. This was their flagship, best of the best, creme de la creme laptop for 2022. They released it in July 2022, I think it was with a bunch of drivers to support this laptop. And come July 2023, I don't think they'd released a single driver update in that entire year. There may be one or two obligatory drivers that fix some absolute critical updates, but for the most part, every Intel driver, every just everything that was needed, the you know, the chipset drivers, the um whatever, it doesn't matter. But all the drivers, the Bluetooth drivers, the wireless drivers, they would they they just stayed the same. It was almost like MSI just released it and then just went right. That's it done. We're now we're now working on the one for 2023, and uh, the, the support just fell off the table. When I say support, if something went wrong, you could co- you would be able to contact MSI and you'd still get support for the laptop. But ongoing support for software is non-existent on these gaming laptops for the most part. Whereas Dell, even today. On some of their really older systems, they're still releasing regular updates, software updates, audio drivers, wireless Bluetooth drivers, fingerprint reader drivers, the touchpad drivers. They're all getting constantly updated, um, which makes you feel like Dell are actually still aware that you have this. That's kind of how it feels to the end user. And they still care that you're getting driver updates and you're refreshing your experience, even if it doesn't actually make any difference really for daily use. Um, So with the gaming laptops, you don't get that. And if something was to go wrong on either of these laptops, like with a hardware fault, good luck trying to get in touch with MSI or Gigabyte and getting something fixed. They will have dedicated support, but it ain't gonna it ain't gonna light a candle to the three main OEMs. They'll have dedicated next day business support, ticket systems, uh, guaranteed support times. They'll have agents that are dedicated to your case, that kind of thing. With MSI, it's a, it'll be a case of hunt down the phone number, try and find it, give it a ring. You might get through, you might not. You might have, especially if you're working in business, and you, if you say anything about AutoCAD or 3D card, they'll be like, oh, but you bought a gaming laptop. <laughs> right? You'll have a fight on your hands. Whereas with Dell, it's par for the course, logging issues like that. Uh, I might be doing them a bit of a disservice, but from what I've seen, what I've heard, what I've experienced in the past, it's never easy getting in touch with these sort of smaller brands for technical support. Now, MSI, just as I'm referencing these guys, they do have their own professional line of workstations. I think they call them the Creator Pro. I think it's the Creator Pro. I had one. I did a video on one a couple of months ago. And they do have dedicated business support for that, but I can't vouch for it. I don't know if that's just another guy sat next to the the, the Titan team or the Raider or the Stealth team who's, who's got a different phone or oh, it's a business phone, right? And, and he has to, I, I don't know, I don't know. But um, either way, you, you're paying extra for that Dell support, uh, which which goes which goes a long way. But then there's also the driver support. And this is really what it all comes down to. It's um, responsibility, culpability for the guy who makes the purchasing decisions. Because like I said earlier on in the video, you're giving if you're a one-man band and a contractor uh i i'll say to those guys just buy a gaming laptop then you know you're making the decision to buy it you're using it if it goes wrong the book stops with you you knew the risks you took the risks you've you've you, you reap the rewards of that saving that upfront saving up until this point now you've got a problem it, it, it really it all starts and stops with you and if you can accept that, fine, go for it. You've saved a fortune. You've got a bit of bit extra performance up until that point. But on a larger scale, when you're talking about issuing out laptops to dozens or hundreds of professionals, who this is the tool that they need for their employment. They don't know a Dell from an HP, from an MSI, from a Gigabyte. They've no idea. They need to do a job. Their employer gives them a tool. If that tool screams at them like a banshee while they're trying to work, fails all the time. Sometimes it doesn't boot because the solid state, 
It's one of the, another issue I've had with the MSI, for example, their flagship system. Occasionally you'll boot it and it'll just drop the SSD. The boot drive SSD just won't exist. It's plugged in, hasn't changed since the day before, but it just isn't detected. So you have to go into the BIOS, you have to fiddle with the BIOS to re-detect the solid state drive, boot it back up and there it is. Sometimes the screen goes weird, just randomly, just unexpectedly. I, I, I can deal with that because it's, it's really frustrating, but if I was issuing that out to dozens or hundreds of engineers, I can't ask them to put up with that kind of nonsense. You need it to be reliable every day, each time, all the time. So you're giving an engineer a tool for their job. If something goes wrong with that tool, and it was me who made that recommendation, I need to be able to defend my purchasing decisions. And it might be the same for you watching this. If you're the procurement manager for a large enterprise, if you buy 100 gaming laptops and you're saving the business 50 grand, 100 grand across the course of that purchase because you bought gaming instead of professional, you might get yourself a nice pat on the back from the finance director, right, or this, the, you know, the, the, the CFO or whatever, who was like, great, you saved us all this money, that's amazing, well done, well done, right, and it, what's that you say? It performs faster than the ones that were more expensive? <laughs> Aren't you a jaw? <laughs> Kudos to you, I'll buy you a drink at the next Christmas party, right? And you may feel good about yourself for that. But if just one of those systems fail in the field, and then it turns out that it failed because the GeForce driver had an unknown glitch with a certain function in an AutoCAD or a certain function in an inventor, even if it wasn't known that it was a glitch between the GeForce driver and the software, the gaming laptop just failed, caused that engineer to lose a week's worth of work, which caused a project to then be late, which caused the company to then be hit with a million pounds per day in late fees on project delivery by the client, suddenly an investigation happens. What happened? The engineer's laptop failed. What kind of laptop is it? It's a gaming laptop. Okay. Is that supported on 3D CAD software? No. Okay. But it works though, and it's faster. Yes. But is it supported? Are the drivers, are the drivers actually certified and tested to work on that software? No. Immediately, who bought it? The guy that saved the business 100 grand up front. You're now costing the business a million pounds a day. Why did you buy a gaming laptop that's not certified to run our software? It doesn't run ANSYS. It's not certified to run ANSYS or Orcaflex or MathCAD or all of these. They open and they run, but they're not tested. Nobody who works at MSI has ever heard of Orcaflex or MathCAD. So why, why are we using their laptops to run our mission-critical business software? Uh, um, well, uh, and you you bought that you you made that decision knowing that and you've just cost us a million pounds a day in late fee. so this is this is my train of thought where i go with it is right yes you could save two grand by buying the gigabyte laptop or you could spend two grand more and buy the dell laptop but later on if something goes wrong something I'm, and don't get me wrong i ain't saying that a dell hp or lenovo laptop won't ever fail or have a crash they will but I can say to the client, look, every driver you've got on this, every bit of gear in here is 100% certified to run this software. If it hits a problem, that's all you've got. There's nothing more you could have done. You're running certified drivers, certified hardware, and the software is compatible with and accredited to run on this system. I bought you the right tool for the job. Crashes happen. Deal with it. And that's kind of so. It's a, it's all there's also a, like a culpability and responsibility aspect to it as well. But for me, issuing out dozens of gaming laptops in, in, into a business is far too risky. Far far too risky. The client might thank you upfront for for giving them something that's quicker in in the in the initial uh, interim, but long term. I, I couldn't rest easy knowing that they if they were to go wrong, I'd have some serious questions to answer, especially if it caused projects to be late. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, and that's... And the boundaries between the gaming laptops and the professional workstations is actually... It converged for a while, and then it, it widened as the gaming laptops got faster, a lot faster than the professional laptops but they do that by emitting a lot more noise, using up a lot more power. The power is not such an issue in business. If, if, a, if a desktop or a laptop uses a couple of hundred watts more power than, than, than another one, it doesn't matter. That's just it's a tax write-off. It's energy costs for business. It's par for the course. 
your IT equipment. If if you're a business and you're worried about how much power a desktop or a laptop's using, that's going to affect your bottom line, then you've got bigger problems to worry about. That's kind of where things are at with power usage. So the actual power draw for a business system doesn't matter. But the heat that it generates and the noise that is a result of that is and does matter. Um, and that's that's another thing that you have to kind of think about. There's probably other things as well, but uh, we are 20 minutes into this now. That's probably about enough. One man bans, sure, go for it. But the book stops with you. You made the choice. You knew the risks. If it crashes, you, you were running something that wasn't supported. Autodesk themselves, for example, they know that their software does run on GeForce hardware. There isn't a single, and I need to, I probably should have made this clearer earlier than 20 minutes in. There is not a single bit of Autodesk software that exists that utilizes a feature of professional drivers. So the RTX drivers, the Quadro drivers, the Quadro hardware, uh, nothing within Autodesk software only functions on those professional hardware. Everything works on both. The GeForce cards will run the soft. If there's a if there's a part of Autodesk software that's graphically accelerated that will take the GPU, put it to 100%, and run on that, the GeForce cards will run it faster, but harder and louder, and on unsupported drivers. And um, Autodesk know this, but they still won't officially come out and say yes, our software is 100% supported on GeForce cards. Why? Because if some guy with a a monsoon X17 CDX-55A laptop bought from China says to Autodesk, "Hey, you said you, I've got a G, I've got a GeForce 4080 in here. You said you support all GeForce cards. My monsoon insert random letters and numbers has just crashed on Inventor when I was doing some graphics thing." Autodesk would be like, "What the shit? What, what the shit is this? I, we've never heard of this before." Who, who, what, what ecosystem is around that GPU, right? Who, they, they don't know. They couldn't possibly support that. They can only support the professional cards and the professional drivers because they're a constant. They're a, they're a single constant, and that's kind of where they're at with that. And that's why, yes, the software works on gaming hardware, but it will never be supported. And when it's not supported, you as the buyer have to think about whether you want to put that into a business and and then accept the consequences of what might happen in the future if things go wrong. Okay, hopefully that made sense. I am not digging on gaming laptops. I run my entire business here on a gaming desktop because, like I say, I'm a one-man band. The book stops with me. Something goes wrong. Things do go wrong all the time. I know the risks. I'm taking that risk. I can't give a tool to a professional engineer and say, you must take that risk and inherit it and accept the consequences of what happens. You've lost a week's worth of work, mate. Well, work some weekends and work some evenings because of my of my purchase choice. Can't do that. So that's kind of where I... And there will be lots of people watching this who will feel the need to defend their purchasing decision, right? I, I bought an MSI or Asus laptop or a Gigabyte gaming laptop, and I've run my business on it for years, and it's been fine. I, I know there will be lots of people who have bought... All the gaming laptops are sitting at the top of my Infomark leaderboard. They they are fine in a lot of cases. In most cases, in almost all cases, they run just fine. It just takes one failure in enterprise to cause a project to be late for it to not be fine. That's kind of what I'm saying. And for one-man bands, individuals, you can take that risk. It's a risk. It's a gamble. It may work for you. You may never hit an issue. It's just a gamble. It's not one that I'm prepared to take. That's where I'm at with it. It's just my opinion. If you disagree, drop in the comment down below. Let me know. It's it's one of those things, right? It's a, it's a subjective opinion-based thing that you make a decision on based on your own experiences. We haven't talked about AMD at all in this. It's all been Intel and NVIDIA. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole, but personally, this is, this is going to get a lot of dislikes on the video. <laughs> but, you know, engagement and all that. I would rather recommend somebody try heroin for the first time because I've heard it sounds good than use an AMD laptop in a, or a, even an AMD part in a professional setting. That's just my opinion. I'm not going to go into why here, but it's based off of a lot of years of experience in using hardware of all different types of variety. And I'll leave it at that. So there we are. That's just going to leave it there. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Neil Cross. This has been Tech 3D. Uh, when's the next video? I'll see you next time. Don't know when that's going to be. I'm working on stuff. Like I say, that's going to actually pay me some money. So um, when that'll be, I don't know. But I'll see you in the next one, whenever that is. Toodle, baby. Cheers, bye.